talking about having a bug out kit. Uh, one thing that I've seen on, on videos before is that bug out kits are usually, uh, the ones on in, uh, on YouTube or Instagram are usually not built for the family. So uh, this is gonna be a bug out kit with a few things that aren't here, uh, particularly with me, and a few things that, I, that I've left at the house. But uh, this video is just gonna be made for you to kind of take some ideas away. Um, I know right now we're living in the times of the COVID-19. So uh, we definitely wanna give you some ideas to keep your family safe in a situation where your family needs to bug out and go somewhere that's more secure and more safe. Uh, you know, any bug out kit is supposed to be within one or two days, you know, three days tops. Um, but what if you what if you have to stay bugged out for a little longer than that and you have your wife and you have your children with you? You know, what are some ideas that you can take away, you know, from this video that's going to prepare your family for a bug out kit? So, let's get into it. Uh, first thing that I like to keep is a little water pack. And I like to get all of the water and all of our water supply together prior to bugging out because one of the main things that you're gonna want, one of the most important things you're gonna want for your bug out kit is potable water. And so you wanna have plenty of water inside your SUV or your pickup truck. As you see, I have uh, two, two, two gallon jugs of water inside of the SUV here. I have the water pack. Another thing that I keep with me is I have an outdoor pack. That's also going to be carried on your person when you're bugging out with two water bottles on the side. Also inside of this little pack that you carry along, me i keep a speed loader inside for your firearms that you're going to carry with you in your pack for self-defense i have a flashlight in here i have a pair of binoculars i have tent stakes i won't pull those out because they're way down deep i have a pair of gloves i have fishing line I carry a little knife and oddly enough I carry I guess what's what some would call a bear bell um the bear bells in a situation where you you've already bugged out with your family and you're in the woods um, you're losing light so you guys decide that you want to make camp um, in a situation where you're bugging out, things are bad. There could be a lot of different reasons for bugging out. Um, everybody's scared of martial law um, in particular. I don't think martial law is the problem. I think, I think if martial law was enforced due to the quarantine that everybody's dealing with today, it wouldn't necessarily be a problem. I think where the problem would arise is after a month, after four months, after five months, and the government's still telling everybody that they're restricted to their homes and everybody begins to get cabin fever or stir crazy. And that's when I think all the panic and things like that will kick in. Furthermore, uh, with that being said, I think that you should have, if you can see here in my SUV, this is my actual bug out bag. But this is my everyday carry bag. So this bag is for actually bugging out. And this bag is for when stuff hits the fan. So basically you want to be proactive, which is the bug out bag. And then you want to be reactive. Because not every disaster or every situation happens where everybody's prepared for it, everybody's planned for it. So sometimes when these things happen, I could be at work, you could be at work, and then you still have to get to your family in an emergency situation. So what's going to help you get to your family in order for you to help your family? It's going to be a reactive bag. 
Your proactive bag is at home. I'm not gonna carry this big bag with me everywhere I go. So I need something that has everything in it so I can get to my family so we can get our proactive bags and hit it. Inside my reactive bag, I carry a small flashlight and if you can see here, I carry a compact firearm. I carry some gloves, some sandy wipes, and it's kind of like paracord, not, not as strong, but it's very elastic. So I can use that for tying things, of course. I have a first aid kit inside of my bag. It's a little big, but it's basically like a huge wallet. So don't worry about the size of your first aid kit as long as you have it. That's in case something happens to you while you're trying to get to your family. A car accident, anything. You, you split the your eye or anything, you can pretty much, you know, get yourself fixed up in a hurry and continue on your mission to getting to your family. I have a knife that has a flint on it, um, safety glasses, and I have a portable phone charger because at any point where you have to be on foot while you're trying to get to your family, and if your phone's low on power, then you can plug your cellular device up, throw it in your backpack, and you can keep on going. And you can keep in communication because not everybody's phone is charged all the time. First item inside of our bug out bag is I have a box. This little box is equipped with pin flashlights, extra flint, mace, knife sharpener, flashlight, and of course I like to use these little flat face wash pieces, uh, they're actually cotton instead of the cotton balls. Cotton balls are a little big, they're really puffy, they can utilize, they can take up a lot of space. So these fit nice and neatly inside of this waterproof box and you can just tuck them away and take them with you and uh, if you need to use your flint to make a fire, uh, in the case of bunging out, you can put nearly, you know, nearly 50 to 70 of them inside of this box and each one of them is going to be you know a start of a, a campfire for your bugging out one thing that i see inside of a lot of videos is people always say to carry a portable battery charger well in a situation that you're in the woods a portable battery charger is going to deplete right it's going to deplete because you've been out in the woods for a long time and you're not going to always have power on it and the only way to get power on it is to plug it up and recharge well, we know that trees don't have any sockets on them, no, don't we? Well, here we have a solar battery charger. I can plug up to three devices on this thing and I can charge one of them on the back of it. So I can plug up four devices on this solar battery charger that is charged by the God-given sun and we can keep it moving and charge our devices. While we're on the topic, you know, in the case where it's grid down and our devices, our cellular devices aren't useful to us. We want to take our phones and we want to write down contact information to all the important loved ones that we have because our phones might not always be available to us. What if we drop our phones? Damn. What if we drop our phones inside of a river or we lose any type of communications that way? then all of our contacts, all of our saved information on the phone is gone, right? How do we contact our loved ones after that? How do we, how do we recover? So you write that down and you tuck it some way, somewhere away in your bug out kit so that way you can call people later on. 
there is a slew of things on my bug out kit so I'll try to run through this stuff pretty quickly because as you can see my bug out bag is packed to the T um, most bug out kits everybody always says with the bug out kit that okay well you got this you got this bug out kit and everybody's you know so adamant about you know how you get it done but there's no such thing as a light bug out kit if you want to have all the necessities that you need for your kit with that being said let's get into it I have a waterproof watch on my bug out kit for when times get rough you want to tell what time it is I'm gonna go ahead and crank out this portion on the side of my bug out kit I have an axe a small hand axe for cutting smalls and getting tender for my fire during a camp out I have a small thing of Zippo lighter fluid inside of my pack I have a knife that goes around my neck for use inside the woods I have a fillet knife for catching fish and camping out in the woods I have a little bit of my gun oil now a lot of stuff that I pull out my bag you're gonna see that I have it wrapped with vinyl tape I like to use the vinyl tape because it's it tends to be non abrasive so it's not gonna rip anything that that I've packaged inside of Ziploc or waterproof bags so it's, it's gonna keep it nice and tight and when it's time to take it off it's not gonna cause any damage to anything that I've wrapped it in next uh, I've, I've utilized my molly webbing on the outside of my bed bag quite quite a lot um, what I like to do is I like to take these headlamps and I like to utilize them on my molly webbing uh, to make a nice little light on my pack while we're, we're walking through the woods whether it's like a salvage situation where we've made camp but I have to go back into town these lights are good I actually have one on the back of the pack too I got the light on the underneath portion of it so I can reach back and click it on the underneath As you see I have another light back here you can't, you can't stress having enough lights in a bug out situation I know uh, one of the problems with with the lights is that you know it's batteries you know, everybody wants to needs batteries and batteries can deplete but you know you have a 10 year shelf life on you like your Duracells and stuff so you pack you one of those but in the event that say you use all your Duracells or it rains and stuff you know what do you do everybody has lights for their bug out kits but what do you do when the batteries you know go out or what do you do if your devices you know become compromised I would suggest that everybody buy them a hand crank, a hand crank light because sometimes your batteries are just not going to cut it for you and you need something that's going to come and replace the, the power that your batteries provide and so these little small compact, uh, compact lights are going to come in handy when you do not have batteries. Another thing that you do not see here on my little SUV is I have a, a tent. Most of the bug out videos have hammocks, you know, people utilizing hammocks. Well, when you're bugging out with your family, a hammock is just not the most practical thing. You want your whole family to be close knit and you want to want to be able to protect them right and you want them to be able to do something you know that they know how to do you know building a tent is a collective collective effort you know most people don't know how to tie a hammock so make sure that you buy go to Walmart buy you a nice tent for you know 50 60 bucks it'll be worth it in the long run 
I got my waterproof matches. Again, can't stress enough that being out in the woods, you're gonna need a, a fire to keep everybody warm. Of course, it's gonna always, temperature's gonna always drop in the, in the late night more than it is, you know, in, where you would inside of a house. So you wanna always have a, a means of building a fire for your family. Here I have waterproof matches, of course, with the tender on the top. Kind of self-explanatory there. Next, when it comes to being out in the woods and you have to collect resources, on my bag, I have two shovels. I have a small hand shovel that I keep on my molly webbing. You know, it's just a takeout little fold shovel. I'm not gonna take it all the way out here, but I just want you to see. I guess I already took it all the way out but just a little small hand shovel. And then I do have a full size shovel that needs to be, that is a screw together shovel. I found this little neat deal and it's it's actually like a, uh, I think it's like a five in one shovel. Uh, these are the handles to it. You pull the handles out, you screw them to the, the base of the shovel. And I'd say you probably got a, about a shovel this big. It doubles as a can opener, it doubles as an axe, it doubles as a hammer, it has a knife, it has flint with it. You can't go wrong with something like this if you can have it inside your pack. Of course, I have plenty of carabiners on here to put my paracords on if I were, were, were to need those in a flash. Uh, another thing I keep is this chest pack. Now this chest pack, when you're bugging out, is gonna hold your full size handgun. And you carry that inside your chest pack. So that way you can keep it moving. This chest pack also has a different compartment on it. You can put little small various items in it, more paracord. And it's just real convenient because it just fits on your back like this. I can still utilize, I can still carry my bug out bag. I can carry this. I usually can, I can carry my waist pack, all of these things. And then people say, well, why don't you just get one big pack? Why don't you get one big pack and just put all of this stuff in it? Well, guess what? In an emergency situation where I'm running, and I don't need this, I can just hit the clip and I can just drop drop weight, right? I can drop weight and I can keep moving and I can, I can make that decision in a hurry and I say, well, what's inside of this pack that I don't need, that I don't have on my large bug out bag? So let me drop this weight, right? And so that's why I like to have them in separates. You know, what if I have a lot of stuff in this? Then I can just grab this and I can drop it off and I can say, let me get rid of that dead weight. Go to a uh, pause. All right, last but not least on the outside of your bug out bag, I have these two in one knife. That was as a machete and a saw on the back side of the knife. So, see if I can pull that out there for you this is a Ozark trail probably not the best knife it's not a full tang but on the back side it's a saw on the front side you have your cutting edge so that's gonna be good for you in the forest when it comes to collecting wood and making any modifications for I guess if you want to make a shelter out of the elements this would be a good tool for you to have Slips in pretty easy. Now we're gonna go on the inside of the bag and show you what we got on the inside. I like to keep a nice little bushel of rubber bands here that I keep inside the front pouch. Ankle support, 
for walking because if you're going to be bugging out and walking on uneven terrain, say someone twists their ankle, um, it's kind of a temporary thing. We do have a uh, splint inside of our bug out bag. Um, if things are really, really excessive sprains or broken arms or hairline fractures, things like that, the splint would be useful. But this is just for like ankle support if someone hurts themselves. Uh, being in the woods doesn't really separate you from aches and pains. So I keep a little cheap bottle of aspirin that you can get from your convenience store. It's not the best thing. It's not like Bayer brand or anything. It's just a generic brand of aspirin. Um, there's 125 tablets in it. So, you know, if the, the, the milligrams are low, the dosage is low, you know, take quite a few. It's 125 of them. Uh, sewing kit keep you a little small sewing kit in inside our bag you walk around the woods I mean you're not gonna be walking around with a wardrobe change everywhere you go so you keep you a nice little sewing kit on hand for if you rip your under 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 roos or you tear your pants you can sew it up and keep moving that packaged up and let's start to get into the meat of things uh, I put this little I put this little paracord on here to keep this zipper closed if you do like tie this on here you can simply just pull it it releases tension and you're able to open up your bag furthermore for water I found these little neat collapsible cups you can get these from Walmart what you do is you relieve the pressure inside the cup and then you just pull it up turns into a full cup you can get water from your water source while you're bugging out while the while there's air not in it then you push it down to the max trap the air inside and then you keep that to the side underneath that I have paracord paracord is good for uh, tying up a clothesline, tying down your tent. This is 550 paracord. 550 paracord, you know, has strands in it. It can, it can uh, withstand up to 500 pounds. It's a really, really good grade of paracord if you're gonna get any. Uh, I usually carry, uh, this is a 50 foot roll. I usually carry two of these, so 100 feet of paracord with you could save the day. I have a little mobile 45 cal cleaning kit for your weapons. Uh, when you're out in the wilderness, you got a little time. Make sure that you always, you know, clean your firearms. Those are going to be your saving grace because you never know when you're going to have to protect yourself or your family from anything that could be out to get you. And anyone also. Pressing forward. Let me get this thing zipped up here. We're gonna switch over to the other side of our bag here. On this side of the bag, here where I stay, one of the biggest uh, things that we have, or venomous things that we have, is the copperhead snake. Um, so you always want to keep you a bite and sting kit with you prepared uh, if someone is stung or bitten by a recluse or a copperhead snake. Uh, this prevents you from being the person that has to suck the poison out and, uh, and get in, and proceed with the, the medical kit and everything. This sucks it out. This gets the process started. So I definitely get one of these. Uh, this is one of the smaller kits. Very affordable, very practical. Keep one of these with you. Another 
other thing we have is a couple very inexpensive ponchos. Um, keep you some high grade ones. Uh, I actually just grabbed these because uh, they were on sale. But these are just your run of the mill plastic cheap ponchos. Uh, you can't go wrong. If you rip a poncho, you need to recover a situation like that. You can use these for multiple uses. They're just plastic. Keep you a couple ponchos uh, on deck. This is a pool rag. Keep your pool rag on deck too because uh, it's a chilly mini. If someone has a fever or something, you need to keep them cool while they're out there. Someone gets again bit by something and you need to keep them cool. One of these uh, mini chilies is gonna really help them out to put on their forehead. Also, I have some Vaseline. And most people say, why do you keep some Vaseline with you? Well, you take your cotton ball and you dip it inside of some Vaseline, then, and you light it with the tender, the Vaseline will help it. It'll act as a candle, and it'll keep your your it'll keep your your cotton ball lit for up to almost six minutes uh, with this Vaseline as an assistant to it. Now we're cooking, we're getting this out of our big bag. One thing, one thing you wanna do when you got a bag that's this big, is you wanna make you a little list. Because if you're bugging out and you got your family with you, your family is gonna be carrying bags too, right? You, don't, you probably don't wanna make your family's bag, your wife or your children's bag, as big as your bag is, is going to be. But if you're gonna have multiple bags or multiple carries, then you wanna know what's in each bag, right? So I made a little list and I kinda of just taped it off. And it's about 50 things in this bag uh, that I carry. And this lets me know, you know, in a situation where, you know, you need something specific. Well, you don't wanna pull all the contents out of the wrong bag and then you lose ground putting all the contents back in the bag. You wanna know exactly you know, what's in which bag at any given time. So, I got 10 snips in this, in the main bag here. <clears throat> 10 snips is gonna be for, for cutting wire, heavy wire. Uh, it's gonna be good for, for twigs, things like that. You can't, you can't go wrong with a pair of 10 snips. I pr uh, prefer that if you get a pair of 10 snips, you buy them brand new. These are Milwaukee's. They are some of the top of the line, 10 snips that you can get. Uh, you want them brand new because if you cut too many objects with metal, then uh, the, the blade will dull and you won't get through much of anything with these. I think I've seen these things so bad that you couldn't even cut three pieces of construction paper. You want a flask. A flask is gonna do good if someone is injured or in a bad situation. Um, you need to you need to put a splint on a broken leg. Well, it's kind of agonizing. So you kind of want to have a little something to take the edge off. Or what if it's cold outside and you need something to kind of warm your core temperature up, right? Until that fire gets going. So I would suggest that you keep a flask and you keep something that's gonna warm the core temperature up pretty, pretty fast. So if you're gonna have a flask, you don't want something inside of your flask that's gonna take a lot of time to heat you up. I would prefer like a good corn whiskey, some Everfresh or something in here that's gonna warm the core temperature up by just a, a short little shot. So you wanna keep your flask with you. Um, right now, this is what uh, I'm using as a tourniquet uh, for wrapping off or tying off uh, legs that have been injured hurt or broken, uh, you know, possible amputations that might need to be done. This is going to be your tourniquet for the bag. I have extra pair of safety goggles for fire, for shooting firearms, 
or just getting down and dirty in the woods, camping, you know, passing through a lot of high up brush. You know, the brush tends to hit you in the face and stuff. You don't want any of that stuff to poke you in the eye. Keep you a pair of safety glasses. This is that splint that I was speaking about earlier in the video. Uh, very inexpensive. It's probably about seven bucks. Keep you a splint with you. It's going to be a lifesaver if you, you injure yourself. You're bugging out. It's going to be a lot of uneven ground. Uh, a lot of your splint work is probably going to come from, you know, your legs, you know, uh, something like that. We have face shields. Um, you obviously want to keep you a face shield on you. Of, go of course, we're living in a time of the COVID-19. So we won't want to always have something to cover our mouths, something on our face, uh, whether you're, you're going through a wooded area, whether mm -hmm. it's uh, some sort of foreign object in the air, you always want to have something that's going to keep you safe and keep you covered. A dry pair of socks. Your most important tool is going to be the tool that you use to get around. So you want to keep dry feet. Make sure you always keep you a pair of socks inside of a dry pack, a waterproof pack that you can always change your socks when it's time. You got your first aid kit. Well, I don't really have to say much about a first aid kit. You hurt yourself, you got ice pack in here, you got gauze in here, you got band-aids, you have antiseptic, everything you need is in here if you hurt yourself while you're out there yourself or either your loved ones always keep that with you this is a finger saw I mean this is kind of like a with all the knives that we have this is kind of like a last last case resort you put it on your finger you put it around said branch and you spin it around it and you cut it off you know this is again last last ditch resort to, to try to get some firewood. It's a very small tool, probably not something you that people are gonna use much in bugging out, but it's good to have it. I like to keep a pry bar and I like to keep zip ties. Zip ties are one of those those tools where it's get it done, get it done real fast. You know, uh, if you can't tie a knot, if you you're trying to, you know, uh, secure your po poly uh, poly cord down to to your tent. Zip ties are a quick and a hurry thing. They're very durable, very flexible, and very strong. And then I got the pry bar. Pry bar can bust windows. You can pry things open. You can pry things out the ground. This is a multi-purpose tool. I love a pry bar, and I keep it with me inside of my bug out kit. Of course, we have emergency blankets for everybody when the temperature drops or when it's time to go to sleep for, for the night. You know, when you got the heat reflecting on you, that that uh, that aluminum coating, right, is gonna it's gonna reflect the heat back onto your person. It's gonna it's gonna heat everybody up throughout the night as long as you keep that fire burning and, and going. So this is a four pack. It's don't die in the woods. Emergency blankets very good stuff I was very happy with the product when it showed up I have cooking cooking equipment boil your water cook your food everything goes inside this pot it opens up doubles into a pot all the equipment is inside I think it's about three pots in one this is also in the bug out kit you know, a lot of this stuff, you know, I'm going through, I don't feel like I have to really explain. It's kind of self-explanatory. You're out inside the woods. You, you're away from the resources. You know, when, when you're at home, those four walls is your, are your safe haven, right? You no longer have those four walls. You're out in the woods. So, you know, everything, we're trying to make this as comfortable, you know, as it can be in a very uncomfortable situation. One thing I don't have with me is a life straw. Uh, make sure that you keep your life straw that is going to be what you need uh, to purify your water in any water source I have a pair I have some duct tape you can make bowls and pots out of this duct tape you can use it to secure things keep you a pair of this and I have 
the vinyl tape. The vinyl tape is good. Um, vinyl tape goes all the way below freezing and then up to uh, 100 and I think it's 125 degrees. And again, like I say, uh, very versatile, ver versatile stuff to use. Uh, very low abrasion, um, easy to wrap things up with and put tension on things main, mainly. Uh, most people are really good with this, but I keep a slingshot on me for small game, for like squirrels, uh, little small squirrels, rabbits, things like that. So you can get them, skin them up, cook them. Uh, most people aren't really good for this, so they use maybe a little, a little 22 rifle or something like that. I happen to not be that bad with the slingshot, and so uh, I carry a slingshot with me. Let's see what else I got here. The last item inside of my bug out bag is I have another waterproof pack, and inside this waterproof pack. I have hearing protection. I have a keychain flashlight. And I have three small headlamps. I'll show you one of them. The headlamps are very inexpensive. They give off a decent amount of light. Uh, we spoke about all these products that we use to, to light fires. One of the easiest ones that we can use to light fire is a lighter. So I keep a lighter with me. Uh, I keep super glue with me. Super glue is actually super glue is actually excellent for uh, covering up cuts. Um, it dry it dries well. It's a very fast solution. And uh, I also keep uh, this is kind of wrapped myself for, for protection. But I also keep a paring knife. You know, a paring knife is you know used to like cut fat fat off of like red meat. So I keep the little pair of knife with me. And of course, some repel for the insects that you're gonna face while you're out there in the wilderness. Um, so yes, this is what's inside of this last kit, inside the bug out bag. So that's what I keep inside of my bug out bag. I'm not sure if you have a bug out bag, but it is a great thing to have. Another thing, I've had this this white box right here if we can show this white box down here this white box that I put inside of my wife's truck and inside this wife inside this white box it's like a little rescue box right so it has ponchos in it it has hot hands and it has a jump kit inside of it it has an emergency blanket I have this rail vac uh, flashlight in here I have a battery I mean I have a excuse not a battery but I have a tire repair kit and I have some extra stems and a stem tool in there for the tires uh, most people don't think about it but you know you're gonna bug out you're gonna get in your car and go as far as you can you know but you gotta be knowledgeable about some of the basics about the vehicle repair the tire being able to check the fluids, being able to change a tire are some of the basic things that you're going to have to take care of when you're bugging out. So I think that's it on the video. Uh, for everybody who has tuned in to the video and liked any of these ideas, if you have any uh, suggestions, you know, go ahead and comment below. And I appreciate you watching this video. Uh, please give a thumbs up if you think this has been useful to you at all. And thanks for watching.